Hi, uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Eric from iFixit, uh, Chief Jewel Officer, and today we're showing uh, two of our most recent products here at CES. iFixit is a famous yeah. YouTube channel, isn't it? Uh, we do have a YouTube channel, uh, but we're most well known for our repair content and our teardowns. Uh, we have more than 100,000 repair guides on our website. Uh, for everything from the most recent smartphones, even to vintage vehicles and coffee makers and printers. You're kind of like uh, uh, pushing the industry in a certain direction. Uh, yes, we're, we're always pushing for repairability, durability, durable goods, uh, design for repairability. And you have kits. What, what yes. are you showing here? So, uh, if, yeah, to keep devices working longer, you have to have the right tools. Uh, a lot of manufacturers use proprietary uh, fasteners to keep you from changing batteries and things like that. So we're constantly reverse engineering those fasteners uh, to create nice. bits for them. Uh, can you just turn the, turn the mic the other way? Yeah. And uh, so, for example, I'm looking at so here. For, so oh, for sorry. this way. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, uh, this triangle bit here opens almost anything with a heating element in it, like a hair dryer. Uh, this oval bit here was only used in a couple of coffee makers uh, in Europe. But wow. because the screw exists out there, uh, we make sure to produce a driver for it. So every single bit in this kit uh, fits something in. This kit covers all consumer devices. All of them? All of them. So, so this, this is our kit, most comprehensive what is, kit. What has happened here? This uh, is cover? Yeah, this is the cover. So this is the ProTech tool kit. Uh, this kit has been out for 15 years now, and we've sold more than 1.5 million. Wow. Uh, and I've always tracked, I've always tracked all of our customer feedback, and we surveyed our customers and got tens of thousands of responses on what they loved about the kit, what tools they never used in the kit, what, what features they would like to see in the kit. And we use that to create our new product we're launching today, uh, ProTech Go. Is that a good price for the kit? Uh, so this kit is $74.95. Uh, the new product is $49.95. Uh, it does it does 99% of everything this kit does. It doesn't have the oval bit for the coffee maker because how much, how much you say the price is? Uh, Forty uh, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Yeah. All right. So totally affordable for the whole world, kind uh, of. Well, if if the tools aren't affordable, then people can't fix things. And uh, does people buying this all over the world? Oh, oh yes, yes. We have uh, distribution around the globe. Uh, we have uh, warehouses in Europe, Australia, Canada. Uh, we just opened a new warehouse in Chattanooga so we can do next day shipping to almost all customers, as well as major retailers around the world. Uh, we have roughly 10,000 retail locations that sell our products around the world. Uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Best Buy, Media Market, Micro Center. Uh, what happens when there's a little bit of glue in the different things? Did you say glue? To get the glue. Oh yeah, glue. Uh, we, we have heating tools for that. Uh, we also have... Um, the anti clamp. Uh, this, this is, uh, yeah, this is an excellent tool for opening a lot of phones. Uh, it suctions on both sides and pulls it open. Uh, glue, glue. We are always fighting. What is this soft for? glue? Uh, so this is our product we launched in October. Uh, this is Fix Hub. Uh, it's our portable soldering station. There's one right. And there's a window you can look yeah. inside. Uh, the iron by itself, right? Nice. Is that the one? Uh, yeah. So you can buy the standalone soldering iron, uh, which is uh, this right here, with its caps for eighty dollars. Uh, to buy it with the portable power pack, this gives you eight plus hours of soldering in the field. Is two fifty, and then to buy the full kit here, uh, which includes everything you need to solder. It has safety glasses, all the way to a heat mat to solder on, silicone electric. Electrical tape. It has flux. Uh, so it's got the solder in there. It's got the wire cutters. How do you make sure the quality of all this stuff is great? Uh, well, we have a lifetime guarantee, and we back it oh, yeah. uh, on all of our hand tools. Uh, and uh, we we work. We just work very closely yeah. with. We work very closely. Um, yeah. with quality control constantly inspecting everything. We use the best materials. We've actually developed some of our own materials like Fixite, uh, which is our own proprietary uh, nylon carbon fiberglass fiber blend. 
uh, that we use for many of our tools. Uh, what is this thing here? Uh, oh, uh, this is a fume extractor so we can show people the soldering iron. Uh, it just, just keeps there from being fumes in the air inside the convention center. Nice. Uh, so you really help people fix it? Uh, yeah, our goal is to teach everyone how to fix everything. Nice. And what could be better? Uh, what was that? What could be better? Uh, nothing could be better than that. Uh, but what could be better for the industry? What, what should all these guys uh, more, think about? More, more design for repairability. Uh, there are multiple products here today at CES that were designed for repairability. And the people have come over from those booths and said to us, you are our inspiration. Actually, for example, uh, Oh Snap, right behind us, uh, here are the new mobile gaming uh, accessory. Uh, he's, a, he's been a huge iFixit fan since he was a kid. And uh, he actually developed that product uh, to be repairable uh, for that reason. And you enable so many businesses, right? Uh, yeah, we People do. We repair work, stuff. Yeah, we work, we work with, we have a whole network of, um, uh, we, of repair shops that we work with. Uh, they're not our shops at all, they're all independent, but we provide them parts and tools. We're the official distributor for uh, Pixel phone parts, uh, Microsoft Surface parts. Uh, so we provide that to repair professionals as well as to consumers. And uh, translated in a bunch of languages? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I don't know how many languages total, but iFixit content uh, is very heavily translated. We have our own translation team as well as volunteer translators around the world. Is there any chance uh, ChatGPT and some of these AIs can use your database of, uh, uh, what do you call it, tutorials to kind of uh, help people automatically? Um, that is an interesting space. Um, I don't know that we're quite there yet. Uh, a lot of the AI technology will uh, hallucinate an answer or mix parts from different guides together. Uh, as it improves, though, I think that is a great possibility. It'd be great um, if it could tell you what you're doing wrong and like help you f look around, understand what's happening exactly yeah. in the tutorial. Yeah, no, that look would look at what you're doing and help you find what you need to do. Yeah, no, I do think there's a lot of potential for AI and repair, and it will be really interesting when we get there. I'm also looking forward to. Uh, I think there's augmented reality. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of future in augmented reality for repair. There's already a couple of small projects that play around with it, but I would like to see much larger adoption of having the ability to pop the hood of your car and then have full augmented reality point to every screw and process you need to do. Is the EU doing a better job than the US in terms of regulating? Uh, yes, or they the, need to do way more. Yes, the EU by far leads the globe in uh, right to repair legislation. They're doing something, right? Something right, a little bit. Yes. But there's so much more that should be yeah. uh, <laughs> in the a regulatory EU, level. Yes, but we have gotten, uh, the EU is requiring manufacturers to, to offer uh, parts and service uh, information to customers for longer than it's ever been required before. Uh, France is uh, requiring repairability scores. Uh, just like we have the energy score on a water heater or a dishwasher, France now has that on products to say how repairable they are. And that is a, a system that iFixit develops and it's based off the same system that we apply to all the newest devices that we tear down. So the US, the new government should get on board with some kind of new ideas? Well, the United States, it's difficult to work from the federal level. So we've been working at the state level and we've had made really big uh, progress in New York, uh, Minnesota, Arizona. California? Um, not as much in California. We do have a lot of traction in California, uh, but we've had... Why can't you do it federally? Uh, it's a lot more difficult. Uh, Biden, Biden did, did uh, pledge support for right to repair, um, but it is, it's easier to get a law passed at a state level because if a manufacturer all of a sudden can't sell a product in New York anymore, or if New York requires the manufacturer to replay, uh, release the repair manuals, uh, which uh, Minnesota is doing, then that, that will spread other places, as well as the manufacturers are now starting to, if they know a law is gonna pass in one state, they start to, uh, start to just comply to it across the whole United States. So hopefully we get enough traction at the state level 
to potentially get a full federal right to repair bill. Because there's so much cool new stuff, but it's also so much great old stuff. And the secondhand market is awesome. There's so much yeah. stuff there. And maybe there's so much more potential so, to develop that more and understand that stuff just keeps working. Oh yeah, no, the, qual the quality, it's amazing, the quality of goods. Uh, I, I cannot buy a pair of shoes as nice quality as I could even 10 years ago. Um, I have rebuilt my washing machine uh, in 12 years. I've had to rebuild it three times. The washing machine at my grandmother's house has been there since 1984 <laughs> and has never needed rebuilt. Well, 